the reduction in the capital gains tax exemption from the 6th of April 2023 announced in the recent autumn statement was pretty savage, wasn't it? Um, it's going to reduce from its current level of 12,300. Remember, it's on a use it or lose it basis, and it will continue to be on that basis. You won't be able to carry forward an unused CGT exemption. That's something to definitely bear in mind, but it will reduce from 6th of April 2023 to £6,000 over 50%. From the 6th of April 2024, it's going to drop again to £3,000. So quite radical changes. It was stated by HMRC in their tax note on the exemption reduction, published four days after the autumn statement, and I'm quoting from our bulletin on this, um, that it's estimated that for the tax year 23 to 24, around 500,000 individuals and trusts per year could be affected, increasing on a cumulative basis to 570,000 in 2024 25. Of this group, by 24-25, it's estimated that a quarter of a million, over a quarter of a million, actually 260,000 individuals and trusts will be brought into the scope of CGT for the first time. Now, that definitely serves as a reminder for us to remind our clients of the power of the tax sheltering given inside uh, an ISA or a pension. Slightly less inside, certainly an onshore bond, because the reserve for tax made on capital gains. Remember, it's corporation tax and the corporation tax rate inside a, a UK bond is 20%. There might be a small discount for gains that are deemed to have been made but not actually realised because of the payment of tax over seven years. Of course, you will get a complete shelter inside an offshore bond for capital gains. But the main thing to remember in relation to that CGT exemption is the power of complete tax freedom inside an ISA and inside a pension. Something else that will need to be taken into account with the drop of that reduction is the funding arrangements that some have to take money out of collective investments, unwrapped investments each year using their annual CGT exemption to fund an ISA. So if you're funding a 20,000 maximum ISA contribution, you may well be forgiven for thinking that the amount that you withdraw, the capital you withdraw from an investment um, in a collective investment to fund that would unlikely carry a gain that exceeds the annual exemption. When it drops to six and then it drops to three, that might not be the case. So a review of those arrangements will definitely be worth doing. Um, so that CGT exemption, something that is harsh, something that is very real and something that will need to be taken into account in managing your investments and promoting the value of tax freedom inside a NISA and a collective. There's also the fact of administration. And that is something that is, is an advantage with an investment bond because there's less administration year on year. Now, for most people, there'll be little administration in relation to capital gains tax exemption because you probably won't exceed it. But when that exemption falls, then you need to take account of the rules. So the current rule requires SA 108, that's a form, to be completed if the proceeds the proceeds, not the gain, the proceeds of your disposal exceeds four times the annual exemption, regardless of whether any CGT is due. Now that's going to be amended for 23-24, for so from the 6th of April 23, to a new cash threshold, a fixed threshold of £50,000, pretty much in line with the current figure of 49.2, four times the annual exemption. Um, so that means that basically, if you're disposal proceeds, regardless of the gain, exceed 50,000, then you will have to fill in that SA 108. Well, what if your proceeds don't exceed that much, but your gain exceeds the annual exemption? Well, you still have to report it. You still have to report the CGT gain if your, exempt, if your gain exceeds the annual um, exemption, and you'll report it on a real-time basis. Even if you're not caught by the proceeds rule, so the four times proceeds rule, moving to a £50,000 fixed rule, isn't exceeded. You go, oh, I don't have to report it. I don't have to tell HMRC anything. Yes, you do if the gain exceeds the annual exemption. And that annual exemption is plummeting by 50% to next year and 50% again the year after. So the requirement to report, even if you don't have to include it in your self-assessment return, will still be there. And that's something else to bear in mind when considering the impact of that reduction of the CGT exemption.